Glenn Compton. I'm very excited about this one. He's told me this is his first fight. This is his last fight. He will never do it again. He's promised his daughter. They wanted to come and test himself, have a go. And uh, I mean, he's looked a little bit nervous chanting backstage. Just a little bit of nerves coming back and forwards. But then, you know, you're stepping into a cage in front of the crowd trying to uh, <laughs> knock someone else out. And they're trying to knock you out. So that is the name of the game. Everyone's going to feel a little bit nervous. And he had a, he had a change of opponent last minute. So... Maybe that's adding to the nerves just a little bit, but like I said before, this is his first and last fight. He promised his daughter. He promised his daughter this would be his last fight. And here he is in the cage at Elite Combat MMA, one of the UK's premier white collar MMA organizations. And Glyn Compton is ready to go. Now, Steve, Mr. Steve the Destroyer Jarvis, took this fight on nine days' notice. That is that is an unusually small amount of notice. You know, most fight camps, you want to do a few months, you want to make sure you've got the cardio, you want to mix up your training, do some wrestling, jiu-jitsu, striking. But Steve, no. Nine days, boom, he's ready to fight. The Destroyer, Steve Jarvis. So he, he, he did reveal to me a little bit that he wants to try and get this done pretty early because he might not have the gas tank to go the full distance but he's uh yeah i mean he seems the more confident of the two fighters to steve jarvis i know he's done this out done a little bit of uh fighting here before some boxing Here we go. I know Steve Jarvis wanted to use his boxing. I know he's quite experienced. Get this done quick. Circling wow. Oh, nice body lock there from uh, Glenn Compton. Looking for the takedown straight away. Steve Jarvis has struggled to do any damage with his little inside the pocket punches there. And I'm just worried about his cardio taking this fight on such short notice. And this is good strategy from Glenn Compton. I mean, just wear the guy out. Hold him against the cage. It's so exhausting to do. Oh, Steve Jarvis just dropped into a knee. That is uh, that is not what you want to do in that position. It's bad cage craft right there. Like I said, these guys are coming off an eight-week training camp. It's hard to get all the tech down. Oh, Steve Jarvis got a guillotine early. And he's really going to struggle to finish it this early in the fight. And he might gas his arms out. He doesn't want to rush this position. It would be very impressive if he could get this guillotine finished. I think uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have his hands together, so it's going to be so difficult to finish. I think now he's just kind of happy just to hold this headlock, work the body a little bit there, soften him up. No, he's moving around, good. Steve looking to his corner for advice. Glenn Compton happy to hold him against the cage. Harvey Harrah, a very experienced referee. Giving some consideration, show, you know, how much action is going on. Often with referees, if nothing's happening, they just reset you back to the middle of the cage. And that's one of the arguments with MMA, you know, is there a, is there a bias towards strikers? Because when we're in these grappling situations, very little happens. Not a lot going on. Even the fighters are confused as to why Harvey Harrow hasn't done something. I think probably uh, Steve Jarvis would like a separation so that he can get back to his boxing. Very little action here in round one. I don't want to be negative, but that was that was pretty boring. But never know. Round two could be a completely different kettle of fish. I'm not even sure how you score that, really. It, not a lot happened. Uh, Steve Jarvis got held against the cage by Glenn Compton. Glenn couldn't really do anything with it. Steve kind of had a, an arm around his head in like a reverse headlock, a guillotine choking, threatening position, but uh, couldn't do a great deal with it. Uh, bit of a nothing round that. 
It's very difficult for a judge to score that. Do you, do you score Glynn for holding against the cage? Do you score Steve Jarvis for um, landing those strikes, trying to get some liver shots going? I mean, the good news is for Steve Jarvis, we know that he took this light fight on quite late notice and might not have the best cardio, and so little happened in that round, it probably didn't get too tired from it. When it's the big dudes fighting, you, you know, you hope for a little bit more, uh, some bombs being thrown. Round two could be very different. We know that Steve Jarvis has got some boxing in the past. He likes a knockout punch just like that, landed. Glynn looking to hold him against the cage. Oh, lovely takedown there from Mr. Steve Jarvis. Nice body shot, softening him up. Excellent work. Glynn needs to work on uh, bridging off the cage, so get his feet close to his hips. He'll be able to drive his hips in the air, bridge him off, hopefully try and get on top, but it's not an easy thing to do. Steve Jarvis did an excellent job of doing some damage from there. Oh, Glynn doing it. Oh, Glynn's giving his back, but he's got the head. He might be able to roll out and get on top. Judo style. Keza Gatami. This judo headlock position. It's sometimes a higher risk position because it's hard to do a ground and pound without uh, the opponent slipping to the back. But I don't think Steve Jarvis is, is a particularly dynamic person that is going to slip to the back. I think he's probably stuck on his back. He's trying to push the head away. It's not quite the right way to escape this position. What you want to do is get right on your left hand side. That's what Steve Jarvis wants to do. He wants to go on his left hand side so he can get his left elbow to the mat, start driving away. Oh, but now he's given up the mount. Things have gone from bad to worse for Mr. Steve Jarvis. Glenn Compton on top with the grapevines. Hooking his legs. Oh, this has been reversed. Will he be able to stay on top? So much more action than round one, but still hard to score. Wow, excellent work from Mr. Steve Jarvis. Taking the fight on nine days notice. Steve is a full-time dad at home, playing with the kids, gets a phone call. Do you want a cage fight in nine days? And he goes, all right, let's have a go. Oh, big shots landed. Could be over. The referee's looking at it. Short time left. Oh. The problem is, did... Uh, did Steve punch himself out? We've got another round. I think the fighters maybe thought it was over then. The degree of optimism there. Our lovely ring girl. Might be the best looking ring girl in the country. Once again distracting me from the action. That incredible round of action. Action, round number one, absolutely nothing happened. I've never been more bored in my life. But round two was such a back and forth battle. Much more interesting. But the problem is, round three, these big guys, Steve taking the fight on nine days' notice, Glenn putting so much effort into that takedown, those reversals of position. Who's got the gas tank for round three? Both men visibly fatigued. Glenn Compton's hair is all over the place. Steve is hands on knees, breathing deep. I think he was looking for the finish in the last 10 seconds. Did he punch himself out? That's the problem. Good, here we go. Steve Jarvis, is, he's trying to time a right hand, I think. Oh, more grappling work from the tenacious Glenn Compton. The thing is, both men are, uh, are pretty good strikers. I mean, the, the bit of striking was in everything looked good. Jabs moving in, footwork's good, but this kind of clinch position, just both men just don't seem to have the knowledge there of what to do. So Glim Thompson's head position is all wrong that low. He should have his head in the chin of Steve Jarvis. And Steve Jarvis, he should be digging for an underhook with his well, either hand. He's got two underhooks missing. If he got double underhooks, he would be in a physically stronger position and be able to turn Glenn Thompson into the cage and reverse his position. But I think maybe both men can strike more striking focus gyms. It's making it very difficult. They just don't have the grappling knowledge to be able to be effective from the position. And they're kind of cancelling each other out with uh, equally poor technique, I've got to say. 
Glenn Compton got, got holding the cage a little bit there as well. Nice bit of cheating. Good. Steve Jarvis looking for a trip or a throw, holding the shirt. A bit of cheating himself. Oh, we're in the middle. Oh, nice little dirty boxing going on from Mr. Steve Jarvis. Oh, sacrifice throw, and it worked. Excellent work from Steve Jarvis to take that fight to the floor and be on top. Took the fight on nine days notice, and he's the, the gas tank for days. Oh, landing shots, softening up the ribs. Only 10 seconds left. Round number three. Oh, and he's on top. Finishes him out. Wow, what a fight. We go to the judges' scorecard for the result. No, no, which way that went. Let's hear it one more time. 